That's everybody's cue. We're about to start. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, for those that don't know, I'm David Hayes, Director of Emergency Services here, and I get one of the privileges of speaking to the group a little later on. But as the beginning, I just wanted a couple announcements for you. We understand it's hot. It's probably heat index of around 100. So anybody that starts to feel a little ill, please identify that as early as you can. We have Company 12, a community volunteer fire company here that has staffing that can take care of some of the preliminary things. If it escalates, we'll involve some division staff and maybe some paramedic level services. But uh, for comfort and convenience over here, you'll notice there's a red and white vehicle. That's the county's rehab unit that has water and likely Gatorade that is fully at your disposal. They also have an onboard restroom and uh, any of those things we can take care of. Uh, after we get done, for those that can still stand the heat and choose to do so, we'll do uh, small groups of tours through the center. We have about 19 hard hats. We're gonna ask that you wear a hard hat uh, anytime you're in the structure and we'll have you with somebody that can give you the information about each of the spaces. Obviously the center is not fully constructed still in hard construction and really none of the soft structures are inside of it so you'll need somebody to help you identify what the spaces are but thanks for coming today and I'm going to turn it over to Commission President Jeff Klein for opening remarks. I was once told if you're the speaker right before a meal hurry up if you're speaker when it's about 90 degrees Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the press conference for our Public Safety Train Center Capital Campaign launch. Today is another marker on the timeline of this training center coming to reality and providing services that will enhance our efforts to train our volunteers and career staff at all levels. When you're doing public safety, someone once told me safety is not an option. It has to be an option. Failure. So today, launching this campaign is the beginning of funding this facility and opening up to the community for training, for all to be trained professionally and to serve our community. Again, thank you, each and every one of you, for being here. It's very much appreciated. Thank you. I'll let you, I'll let you introduce yourself. Okay, strong work. That was quick. Okay, I'll be brief as well. I know some people probably think it'll be a first for me. Um, but like I say again, Kevin Lewis, Deputy Director, Division of Emergency Services, Responsibilities of Administration and Training. Welcome to my facility, or our facility here at the county, which at one point I'll occupy hopefully here very shortly. As I come to you today, though, real quickly, what I would say is, I feel like the expectant father, okay? So as the expectant father, I couldn't get Brendan to do the whole blue paint thing or whatever as far as like any cannon fires or July 4th activities or whatever. But for the Public Safety Training Center, for many of you probably are not aware that it's just been going on for a long time. Um, there's many people that are not here today with us and people still, they're currently here today that have been fighting for this center for many years. And as Commissioner Klein talked about the timeline, another day, another event, another, here we are. You go back to this training center, it goes back to even earlier prior to the 1990s, okay? 1998, there was actually a Burracker study that was completed that looked at comprehensive study of fire and emergency and medical service delivery here in Washington County. A part of that study, there was 120 study recommendations how we could approve the service delivery to the citizens of Washington County to take us into the future. Well, here we are today in one of those recommendations. One of those recommendations was to work cohesively as a consolidated service delivery system, looking at public safety training. So as this became one of the study recommendations, early back in, in 2001, the Mercy Service Advisory Council presented a report back in February, which basically said, look, we gotta acquire the property, we gotta look for the land, do the permitting, do the design, 
and basically construct a facility. It's time. Back in 2001, it was time then. So we look at our, again, how we deliver the service today and how we do the training. It's spread out throughout the county. We have a lot of great facilities, we have a lot of great resources, and we have a lot of great people. But the recognition was made that we've got to come up with one place where everybody can come and train together. So basically, after 2001, we got a little bit further, okay? We actually made it to the county's 10-year CIP project plan, CIP plan. So look at the county's 10-year plan and getting the facility onto the scope of the plan allowed us to actually look in the future. But like I say, some days we can be skeptical and some days we can be positive and some days we can make it just wondering if this day would ever come. So as we look at it then in turn, we thought, okay, we got a lot of great assets in the county. We got a lot of great people, a lot of great companies, a lot. So May of 2010, through the collaborative efforts of many public safety professionals, some of which are here today, state training agency representatives, volunteer fire rescue association, the city of Hagerstown, Washington County, and Hagerstown Community College, a concept plan was written to basically, how could we explore developing a consolidated public safety trainer in Washington County? Yet 2010. So the years are clicking by, okay? Time keeps moving. But finally in June of 2017, the county executed a contract with Crabtree, Rohrball, and Associates to start the architectural the engineering, the design services, and the construction administration for the project that you see behind me in June 2017. And then finally, October 2019. October 2019, we actually, and some of you are here today again, we came for the groundbreaking ceremony. So we came to the groundbreaking ceremony, actually turned the dirt over, and thought, you know what, self? We're gonna see this thing happen. Right? We're going to work through this, thinking about all the basically time and attention and everything that's been given to this center to get to where we are today. So the groundbreaking ceremony occurred on October 29, 19, 2019 in phase one. Phase one basically consists of the site development, with phase one being the site development, putting in the infrastructure, putting in the road work, putting in the foundation, laying the groundwork basically for the rest of the construction project. And finally, because that one blows away, okay, <laughs> here we are, November 2020. November 2020, we finally started construction. November 2020 is we started construction through low bar construction. It's like, oh my gosh, this expected father. There's actually a schedule. There is a timeline. I'm not allowed to speak to the schedule timeline today. So Discuss schedules and timelines. Okay. But as an expected father, it's like, you know what? I could probably start moving this party along. Okay. So, how can we come down, have today's event, get everybody back together, allow everybody to collectively actually see a little bit of this facility moving forward? Just hopefully, like I say, it's a little engaged and we'll take some people through some tours here in a little bit. But, and I'll leave it at this with the and I think in the contracting world, the expected, uh, how, how do they word that, Brennan? It's expected substantial completion date that contract would prescribe it in the, for the purchasing people in March, with the contractor saying, oh, wait, we're, we're thinking about February, but you know, we'll stay with the March. We're still doing good, okay? That actually then as we look at it from a public safety standpoint, that come summer, fall, and so forth, we can actually start moving programs here. And yet, to this morning, uh, another big hurdle, another big opportunity, as far as basically how we can advance the public safety, is the acquisition of the paramedic program. The commissioners approved that this morning to allow us to start teaching the paramedic program as we look at bringing that program here the fall of next year after we're able to relocate and working collectively again with HCC and, and then maintaining all the accreditation and stuff going forward. So, um, like I 
say it's emotional for me. Um, as everybody knows, I'm very passionate about training when it comes to education from a public safety standpoint. Um, and I, I look forward to that day to come. And again, thank you all for coming today to participate with me in it. So with that point, I'll go back to the agenda. I'm pretty much done. Not taking any questions. I'll take those inside when we get out of the tent. I'll turn it over to Sheriff Mullenberg. Thank you, Kevin. For anybody who knows Kevin, that was short. <laughs> so first of all, I'd like to welcome everyone to the first phase of construction. Uh, actually, it's phase 1A of construction of the uh, Washington County Public Safety Center. So thanks for coming. Kevin, is this where you pass the offering plate? <laughs> the Washington County Sheriff's Office, the Hagerstown Police Department, and the Hagerstown Community College entered into an agreement back in 2019, early 2019, to establish the Washington County Police Academy in uh, Hagerstown. And it's currently being held at the community college. Uh, we have completed three uh, academies, and we're on the fourth academy at this time. It'll graduate in October 1st of this year. However, the Hagerstown Community College space is very limited. It's not going to support the future needs of law enforcement, let alone public safety as a whole. The Washington County Police Academy doesn't just train police officers for Washington County. It also trains police officers for Allegheny County, Garrett County, and Frederick County. The entry-level police academy isn't the only training need for law enforcement in today's environment. Every police officer must conduct at a minimum 40 hours, and that's not including firearms and specialized training each year. And by the way, the police academy runs seven months now, and then you have to do four months of field training after that. So it takes a year from the time you're uh, hired till the time you can actually be on the street policing by yourself. With the number of active shooter and mass casualty incidents that are occurring across the country today, we're spending more time with our fire and EMS partners training to successfully mitigate mass casualty incidents. This type of training requires a facility just like the one behind us where we can all come together and become familiar with the personnel and the concepts to handle mass casualty incidents. The Public Safety Training Center here today will begin to fulfill that need. I want to thank the county commissioners uh, for their commitment to public safety and to the public safety training center. There are still a number of other phases of the project that need to be funded. Much of the funding is coming from the Washington County Sheriff's Office school zone and speed cameras. So those of you who paid your $40 going through the cameras, we certainly appreciate it. You contributed to this facility behind us. However, the actual goal of that facility is to reduce the speeders within the speed uh, zones. And so revenue would go down, which it has, and we're thankful for that. So that means that we have to find other funding sources to help assist with the uh, training academy. And that's where this campaign will actually come into play. It's vital for fire, EMS, and law enforcement that we build out all the phases of the public safety training center as quickly as possible. We're already behind the eight ball. As Kevin mentioned before, we've been uh, down this road for a long time. The clock's running out. We never know when the next mass casualty incident is gonna occur right here in Washington County. It could be today, it could be tomorrow, it could be a week from now, but it is gonna happen. There's no question in my mind. It's our combined goal to meet the challenge ahead by being trained and prepared for such an incident. We hope that you will help us meet this challenge through this campaign so that we can protect you. Thank you very much. With that, I'm going to introduce uh, Dale Fishak, who's president of the Washington County Volunteer Fire and Rescue Association. Dale? training center, I think back to, I started in the fire service 37 years ago as a volunteer, officially, but I rode fire trucks probably from the time I can remember with my dad, and 52 years old today, and all I could ever remember was the dream of the volunteers in this county was to build a training facility. So on the volunteer
volunteer side, I think that's where the vision may have began. And from my research and talking to the old timers, I believe it started back in the early to mid 70s, the vision. Through that time, the association raised funds, looked for various plots of grounds to be donated, worked hard to come to fruition for a training center. And when you talk about the training center, there was a lot of individuals that was involved, but I don't know if anybody else's name that comes to the surface was more prominent than uh, Jay Grimes' vision for a training center. And then about 2014, I believe it was, uh, we had about $276,000 that we had put beside or aside to invest in the training center and we were ready to spend some of that money and the commissioner said, we want you to put that money back to use in your volunteer fire and EMS companies. So we graciously uh, took that money back, gave it to our companies and the burden became the commissioners to see the project through, which is where we are today. The training center, as you have heard already, is a greatly needed uh, addition to our community, especially for the volunteers. When I started in the volunteer service, I stepped on a fire truck the night I was joined, and I was riding calls. I had no training other than what I learned in the station. Today, that doesn't happen. Today, we need numerous hours of training, many classes, and it's almost a year before you're ready to step foot on that fire truck and be an active member. And that is if you can meet the timelines of getting to every class. Getting to every class may mean you're not in Washington County, may mean you're going to Frederick. Be, mean you're going to uh, Cumberland to a class. With the training center here, that means our people stay here, our people have time to spend with their family, our people have the opportunity to train locally and get accomplished what they need in a shortened time of demand. I'm happy for the partnership that we are a public service training center. When you look at whole, we are one emergency service community. We all need to train, we all need to work together. We are each other's brothers and sisters out there in the field. And with a facility like this, we'll be working in close conjunction and cooperation with each other and we become one team. I'm happy to be a part of this uh, campaign kickoff today and happy to see that um, not only was the ground broke, but we have structures behind us and we are on the right track. But we need to get over the hump and get this, the facility completed and finished fully. Get older, we need these little helpers. And little <laughs> I found that out pretty quick. Anyway, so uh, thank you to the uh, the director, Lewis Sheriff Mullendorf, President Fishak, for introducing the training center and its concepts and how we got here today. My job is to tell you why you're here today, or at least in part why you're here today. So today we're going to launch uh, the public safety capital campaign, which is geared to try to raise additional funding to help do what Sheriff said, is build this structure out as quickly as we can, understanding that county budgets only have so much money and so much programming that we can do. So the idea behind this came when several of us were touring some of the Eastern Seaboard Training Centers in, in Chester County, PA, had done a similar campaign because they had significant dollars and cents to construct the facility, but to make sure that it was a state-of-the-art facility, that they didn't have to cut any corners, and they could fall within program budgets. They did a campaign just like we're speaking to today. So what we're asking you to do as uh, community partners, some in public safety, some of you are not, but to partner with us and help us go out to our business and citizens of Washington County and find additional passion to be part of really what's once a lifetime opportunity. Most of us that are at least at uh, my age Older, won't likely see another opportunity like this in our lifetime. Not for a project that means this much. Uh, so, with that said, uh, I'll go through the outline of what the campaign is designed to do and the, the uh, contribution levels that we built into that. There are many areas, and hopefully, some of you can stay today to go through the tour. Uh, you will see there are many spaces within the inside the building that are prominent, meaning they actually mean something. You can tell that they mean something something. Not that the entire
entire building will not do that as well. But uh, we identified six spaces, primary spaces within the building that we thought could answer some of the questions that we had posed uh, and been posed over the years from, uh, in some cases, families, in some cases, businesses, about either naming the entire facility after somebody or portions of the facility and how that could all happen. Some of those conversations talked about dollars and cents. So that led into the program that we're talking about today where we realized if we pick one person, and you've heard the stories from the Sheriff Director Lewis and President Fishak, we likely would upset another group because there probably are multiple people that are worthy of that. And I absolutely would agree with President Fishak's uh, statement where uh, Jay Grimes from the, the Grimes family in Williamsport certainly has been a strong driving force in this moving forward. But, uh, so going by that, we came up with the idea that we would theoretically reserve the naming rights for certain products or areas in the building for a specified dollar amount donation. So we identified, as I said earlier, six spaces. One of those would be the multi-purpose room, which you'll see is on the back end of the building. You really can't see much of it from here. It does not have its standing roof structure on it. And that is designed to seat about 250 people. So that's a larger space. It is the largest space in the structure. And for that, uh, that donor to get the rights to name that, we'd be looking for a $300,000 donation. And we understand that's not everybody's pocketbook. So we're truly appreciative of that. The second one down is the atrium. That's the main entrance you see behind me, the prominent peaks and all that space there. And we put that at a request of 200,000. And then we come down, this also will house our future emergency operations center. Currently that is in our combination training room uh, at the Division of Emergency Services on College Parkway and certainly is undersized for its current needs. So there's an emergency operations center that is built into this that will also serve as part of the classroom space as well. And obviously if we had an activation that we needed to move, we would either cancel or move classes out of that room into someplace else. That one is 75,000. Then there are four small classrooms that are in the front side of this building. Each of those are placed at 25,000. And then there's uh, one large classroom that seats about uh, 50 to 60. And that uh, cost that we put on that was 50,000. And then the last one we have is here on the, the right front corner of the building. And that is a full weight room that's in there. It's a large space and it pretty much will uh, parallel what most gyms have to offer uh, to keep alive and that's a $50,000 $50, contribution. When you move over to the second side of the donation phase it's really a wall of fame and that will likely be in the atrium area and we have four different uh, categories one is law enforcement, one is fire, one is EMS and one is just a good Samaritan and that's meant to be somebody that may not have any direct connection to fire, police or EMS but just wants to be part of the cause uh, as great as this and in the, the law enforcement there's a sheriff's club that requires a $2,500 uh, minimal contribution, and then uh, $1,000 the regular contribution. The $2,500 and that will carry through in each of the next three categories. Get you an individual plaque with your name on it hanging by itself on the wall. The $1,000 donations go on a cumulative plaque and will hang with multiple other donors in the same area. For the fire plaques, we have a Chiefs Club, again, the $2,500 minimum for an individual plaque. We have a regular donation of $1,000. We have the EMS plaques, which is the Lifesavers Club. Again, the $25 and $1,000 minimums. And then the Good Samaritans, and it is the same, $25 and $1,000. We recognize that those numbers are large to many people uh, throughout our community. So the future goal is to consider some type of memorial remembrance garden outside of the facility that would like to be similar to a brick campaign where you could potentially buy something in, in memory of your loved one or just your family or whatever you might want to do there. Uh, obviously, anybody can donate any amount, and we certainly would be more than willing to accept that. I'm proud to announce that uh, the Community Foundation, and I don't believe anybody is here from them today, but they have partnered with us to be the pass-through agency. They're a 501c3 corporation, which allows it to be a tax-deductible uh, donation moving forward. So our goal was for this campaign to run somewhere between six and eight months. Uh, we don't have the horsepower to run a multi-year campaign, at least not full throttle at this capacity. Uh, but overall, that's kind of where we're going to take this program. And uh, our goal was to raise at least $1 million. So we issued the challenge to you again as our partners and those that are listening out in our social media world. 
news areas uh, where you can. We ask for your help. It's a great cause. I'm extremely proud to be a part of this, and I'm excited to launch it today. So with that, uh, I'm going to turn it over to our County Administrator, John Monterano, for closing remarks, and then those that want to organize for tours, uh, we'll give you some directions after that.